Hey, how's everyone doing? Mr. Zagari here, and this is our first episode of Zag's A Push on the Road. So, as you can tell, I'm not in the underground garage. I am not in the um, uh, weird social studies closet at the high school. No, I am actually on the road. So, um, this is going to be a first of hopefully many, and I figure what better time to do this than a midsummer installment of Zag's A Push on the Road, where I'm going to try to come at you from a historical site of historical importance within our social studies and A Push curriculum, and kind of, you know, make history come alive from a, from a, from a location where something of historical significance actually happened. So I figured what better way to kick this off into a location in my hometown of Bridgewater, New Jersey, um, that was one of the factors that really influenced me into becoming a teacher and really influenced me in becoming um, a history nerd that I am. So I am actually here in Bridgewater, New Jersey, and before uh, Bridgewater became a hotbed of lacrosse and uh, 1998 uh, state lacrosse championships, we were actually at the crossroads of the American Revolution. And here we are at the Middle Brook encampment. And um, this was a Revolutionary War encampment. And George Washington was actually on these grounds. Um, and this, this encampment here is in the foothills of the Wachung Mountains. And Wachung means high hills in Lene Lenape. And Lene Lenape is the um, group of Native Americans that inhabited this part of North Central New Jersey. So um, we are in a very rocky terrain right here. And the encampment itself was actually one of two encampments. And the first encampment, and I'm going to kind of walk around a little bit in this part of the encampment. This is actually the where the Washington Camp Association has their, um, you know, park, so to speak. But I'm also going to go to another location and give you the view that actually Washington was keeping his eye on General Howe and causing some havoc to keep, to slow Howe down so he could not make a land crossing um, across New Jersey to Philadelphia and attack the, the continental capital. But more on that to come. But so here we are. We're at the Middlebrook encampment. Uh, the first encampment started in April of 1777. And Washington was um, actually, his winter encampment in 1777 was actually up in Morristown um, after the retreat and disastrous, uh, if the disastrous defeat in New York. And he kind of went north through Manhattan and then crossed over the Hudson and came came back down through New Jersey and found himself uh, encamped in Morristown. And what we have to remember is that um, we are in Revolutionary War time. So they, there was actually an off season to war. So when he came across um, and, and it winter fell, they actually took a time out from war and tried to regroup themselves. And his winter encampment was in Morristown. Well, there was some skirmishes happening that early spring in Bound Brook, New Jersey. So, which is a little bit about 15 to 20 miles south of Morristown. So he brought his troops um, south to the Middlebrook encampment, which we are here in Bridgewater, New Jersey. And the legend has it, one aspect of this is that the first American 13 star flag, which you could see in the background here, whoops, I dropped some of my notes, um, was unfurled here. So Francis Hopkins, one of the signers of the De Declaration of Independence, a Jer uh, Jersey congressman, um, is supposedly the designer of this flag, and I'll drop a better picture of it here. Um, this is not the Betsy Ross fat flag, that colonial flag that we, you know, always connect with the American Revolution, the circular stars. But this flag behind me was supposedly unfurled on June 14th, 1777. That's right, that's Flag Day. Um, so that's where supposedly this is the first place where the Middlebrook and Cameron was the first place where the first um, official American flag was adopted by Congress and unfurled as a flag of the United States. So you can see that right behind me there. I'm going to try to get a better close-up of it. Sorry, I'm using this new camera here, so let me know in the comments. Whoops. There you go. There's there's a dead wind. So it's a 13-star flag. The actual stars on it are more pointed. Let me see if I can get a better shot of it. Um, there you go. 
okay? So, I also have my official revolutionary hat on. This is the 13 star flag of the Green Mountain Boys of Vermont Regiment. But, um, so, and we're also in Unit 3 for anybody that's counting if you're thinking about a push in the summertime, which I know you are, and if you miss it, or if you're new to the class, welcome. Um, so, this is where the first flag was unfurled. Now, and we're just kind of cruising around the campgrounds here. What we also have here is that, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come back. Okay, so in a second, what we're going to look at is where Washington, so all of this, these, this area here would have housed troops. Okay, and now this it wasn't just this place. We could see this is a heavily wooded area. There's, it's an extremely rocky terrain, and it's uphill from here. This is the first ridge of the mountains, and then it goes up further. Now, this is all trap rock that they call it. So Washington and his troops were dug in. They were entrenched in these foothills of these mountains. Now, these aren't the Rocky Mountains. These aren't even the Appalachian Mountains. It's a small volcanic... Um, outcropping, so to speak. So Washington was here, he was entrenched in here, and there was eight to 10,000 troops um, in 1777 and later in the second encampment in 1778 into 1779 uh, during this time period that were entrenched here. But we also have to remember that it wasn't just troops that were in these encampments. There were also many women that were part of these encampments and camp followers that made these encampments truly work. They were the backbones of the encampments that did a lot of the laundering service, the cooking, the cleaning, the nursing to keep this encampment alive because a lot of these troops were malnourished. They didn't have clothing. They didn't have, um, um, any type of, 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 even they, a lot of them lacked shoes. So it was just a very, very poor environment for everyone. And they were really struggling during this time period. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to a spot called the Eagle's Nest, which is further up the ridge. And I'm gonna show you the view that Washington will look at when it came to General House. So the next segment of this is gonna be a little bit more military strategy. Coming back to you. Okay, folks, I'm back. So. I am actually at one of the spots now, which is overlooking, and I'll show you a panoramic, which is now a rock quarry, and then overlooking to the south and east, you can see the view. So this is what Washington and his troops would be looking at during the Middlebrook encampment. Now, the British, during this time period of 1777, were encamped southeast of my location here in Bridgewater, New Jersey, in parts of Staten Island, as well as New Brunswick, New Jersey. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to, General Howe, the British general, wanted to have a land attack against Philadelphia and take the glory of the rebel capital. But what Washington was able to do was he was able to, um, you know, combat these hit and run tactics uh, from the Middlebrook encampment in this position and, and have little skirmishes to occupy General Howe where he wouldn't be able to assault Philadelphia by land. So what he would have to do is have a sea assault um, amassing ships from Staten Island to Philadelphia would just, would with that being so, would just have taken way too long. And by doing so, what Washington really ended up doing was delaying how so much by um, these hit and run tactics from Middlebrook was that it actually delayed him so much amongst other things with with issues that Howe was having with General Bourgoyne up in the northern campaign coming down from Quebec um, actually delayed Howe from going to Saratoga and sending reinforcements to Bourgoyne which then would force Bourgoyne to surrender in Saratoga um, in the fall of 1777 and then issue an American victory in Saratoga, the surrender of the British in Saratoga in 1777, and allow the French then to come in, which is the turning point, as we all know, of the war. So some historians give credit to the Middlebrook encampment for that. What the Middlebrook encampment really shows is, look at this terrain. I mean, this is the 21st century, and this is just absolutely solid rock terrain. We see a stone quarry here. 
okay? So this is not easy terrain in the 21st century. Imagine this terrain in the 18th century. So this shows that the Americans are doing whatever it takes, whatever logistically possible it's going to take to their advantage to win the war for independence. And the Middlebrook encampment truly shows that. And this is just one aspect of this. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, tried to keep it quick. This could go on forever. I'm going to drop down in the description uh, different readings about the Middlebrook encampment and also the, uh, the AMC uh, TV series Turn also does mention the Middlebrook encampment quite often in a couple of episodes in, in season three, which I'm going to drop those episodes in the description. So you should definitely check those out. Benjamin Talmadge uh, was in the description. He's actually a Long Islander. He's from Setauket. And when I do the, I'm going to visit in my hometown of Northport, where I, you know, reside with my wife and children. Um, this is where I grew up. Northport's where I live now, obviously. Um, where the Battle of Fort Salonga happened, and that's actually with Benjamin Talmadge. So he was in both in, in my hometown where I grew up and my hometown currently. So he's one of my favorite Revolutionary War heroes, um, which is pretty neat. So yeah, Middlebrook and Cammon, pretty neat place. One of the reasons why I got into the business um, and just a really interesting, interesting piece of American history nestled in a New York City suburb of Bridgewater, New Jersey. This is Zags A Push. Keep it real. Hope you're having a great summer. We'll see you guys in September. More Zags A Push on the road to come. Just show you guys this typical terrain. Some outtakes of my tr walking here. So, where Washington and his troops and camp followers walked in the 21st, in a, excuse me, in the 18th century, you can see this rock, are now hiking trails and mountain bike trails in the 21st century. And this is also called Washington Park. So Washington Valley Park, because this is a valley. We are in a valley in between the two ridges of the Wachong Mountains. Remember, Wachong means high hills in Lenape. So we saw this terrain, which is pretty cool. Sorry. Pretty neat. And we'll show you some more outtakes.